Andrew went up to the hospital yesterday because his back is killing him. Literally. But uh, an interesting side note is the kids having to deal with the facing the idea of death, facing the idea of finality. And apparently Victoria uh, is at that age where she's asking a lot of questions and seems like she's having a little bit of a hard time dealing with the idea of what's happening to her grandpa. The plan would be to like, you were talking about a, like going through a little bit of a program at the church or or is it not church related? Is it just like a civic center thing? Zandy was talking about Henry Ford. Health systems have a series of videos yeah. to help people deal with certain illnesses, certain conditions, and I'm sure death would be one of them. Yeah. You yeah. know, things leading to. Good morning, how are you? I am fine. How are you this morning? But sometimes you need external help to get you through, just like a counselor, you know, in general for whatever problem you might have. And the first exposure to death is, especially when she's that young, with somebody so close, could be a could be a, a heavy burden. I gotta tell you, I was really surprised at Victoria's reaction to me. Yeah, because I haven't felt that close to Victoria. We haven't spent a whole lot of time with her. Yeah, you know, and I didn't know that I meant Victoria. I didn't know that I meant that much to you. Mm -hmm. And it feels so good to know that you love me like that. Um, I'm sorry we haven't been together very much, but you know what? We'll be together, and I'll always love you. Yeah, that's sweet. Love doesn't go away. You know, love is in your heart. So even though my body might not be here, um, I'm gonna be in your heart and in your mind. You'll always remember me, I hope, you know, and then um, you'll carry me with you wherever you go. Just because somebody dies doesn't mean that they're not there with you. And I think that's something important mm. to take with you. You know, Matt goes to China for a year. He's in our hearts right here, and we carry him with us. Let's see, what is? we had a sign above Matt's bed. Life, life is what you make of it. Life is what you make of it. And that could be said for death also. Death is what you make of it too, eh? Huh? Death is what you make of it. Yeah, yeah. It can be a very sorrowful, depressing Sad. experience, yeah. or it can be a celebration of life. Yeah. That's for sure. Jai out of that. Your dad was driving the car, and you're going like 60 miles an hour down the, down an old country road. And oh, where all them chickens were? Yeah, and they were crossing the road. Yeah. Dad didn't pay no attention to life on the road. <laughs> yeah, if it's there, he's going through it. Yeah. So we're going down this road, and we had this Pontiac. Yeah, it was a good car. I it was going 60 miles an hour, no problem. Up the road, I see these fowl, <laughs> turkey, chicken, geese, duck. Yeah, but <laughs> whatever. Yeah. Well, Dad saw them too. You know, he couldn't miss from seeing them. <laughs> yeah. The old Pontiac we had. Heavy, not, heavy thing. Those old cars were like moving chunks of lead. Yeah, the, the bumpers were like a quarter inch. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Solid steel, yeah, right? Yeah, there, yeah. You know? 36, 1936. So I'm waiting for Dad to slow down. <laughs> so, it don't slow down. It, if anything, it went faster. <laughs> that, that, anything on the road, he, he's going right through it, and that's what he did there. You could hear that noise inside the car like he was outside. Well, I don't think it was con, I think it was... <laughs> dun, 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 dun. Right, 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 right. But he, uh, there's a car that passed us up. <laughs> Guy's head was like this. Yeah. Was, <laughs> they made a mess out there with that. <laughs> you know, that farmer gets mad. Farmer's poor. You don't have much money. You know? yeah, yeah, and here yeah. is, this is ripe chicken yeah. stuff. They've it's been just, growing those things for a year. Yeah. Powering through that damn <laughs> hole. Don't a whole mess, a gaggle, a gaggle.
But what's he gonna do? Was he gonna put on the brakes and stop for the to... Yeah, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. It was bloody as hell. Yeah. And on top of that, this was a 1936 Pontiac that mm -hmm. we had. And I looked on the fender and there was a nice scoop involved. It was if you took a golf ball like golf ball. The head the head of one made, of the chickens. Made out of iron, you know, and put it up against the fender. It was right in the middle of the fender too. Yeah. And that head Murderer. <laughs> yeah. He murdered that head. <laughs> But I don't feel sorry for it because it couldn't feel anything. Didn't feel yeah. <laughs> Never knew what it was. One is. second it was alive, the next it was in yeah. turkey heaven. Oh, it was like having your head chopped off. It yeah. was just oh, like oh, guillotine. Oh. Guillotine. It was I, gone. I call it sort of a mash. Mm -hmm. You know, heroes flying and everything. Next thing it's a mash. Yeah. I can't imagine that farmer must have. Oh, not he happy. Have, he must have. Not happy. You know, in uh, in China, I can't communicate with Annie's father very well. He speaks very fast Chinese, yeah. and most of the time he's speaking a different type of Chinese, oh. like a local language. Yeah. He yeah. wants to connect with me, but he doesn't know how. Oh, right. He can't talk, so it's cigarettes. You know, he smokes cigarettes, because in China it's... You communicate with cigarettes, you know. Smoke together, and then you sit, and it's kind of a nice way to do it. I mean, smoking's not good, but... It doesn't require any talking. It's just you sit there and you look at each other and you kind of, you know, sit on the porch. Well, what, what if the other guy's eyes are crying like crazy? <laughs> well, smoke. no Chinese. Every Chinese person is very used to smoking. Smoke. Yeah. Smoke, 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 smoke. Okay. Yeah. But uh, so there's smoking, which is not something I'm particularly really interested in. Right? There's drinking, you know, mm -hmm. and when they drink, it's rice wine. It's like drinking paint thinner. It is brutal. And if you drink it one day, the next day, you're in a lot of pain, you know, because wow. it, it really messes up your heartburn like can crazy. You, can you say, I don't want it? The problem is that I don't have anything else to do. Yeah. You know, if you say, no, no, I don't want it, then what am I, what am I going to do? Friendly. He's not even friendly. Yeah. You know, how are we going to communicate? Right. He doesn't, you know, he doesn't talk. We smoke right. cigarettes and drink. And if he doesn't want to smoke cigarettes and drink, what, what the hell are we going to do? You know? Yeah. yeah. And so, oftentimes, I'd accept a cigarette, or I'd accept a drink, and you know, I just, you know. So one day, we were having dinner, and they really like the cartilage parts of animals oh. in China. Yeah. So they like the feet of the chicken, they mm -hmm. like the wing of the chicken. They're chewy. They like the neck of the chicken. They like to pick meat out between joints, you know? Yeah. The least favorite part of a chicken is the neck or the back. No, for, for them, yeah. is the breast. Yeah. The big, meaty yeah. breast. Hey, yeah, throw that away. Give me, the, give me the foot, you know? They had this big chicken dinner and normally they have the pot, like a chicken soup is really popular. They'll do chicken mm. soup with potatoes and corn mm. and, and, and carrots. And they'll, they'll take the soup, they'll drink the soup and then they'll pick at the wings and the, but the always be the breast would be left. And I don't know, I'd, I'd scoop up the breast right away mm -hmm. because that's the one thing I like is the breast. It's right. the healthiest part of the chicken, chicken and, and yeah. it's the most meaty. Do, do you think they, they talk about it? Well, I grab the breast and then I grab the other breast and I'm I'm eating yeah. and they're all looking around like... Two hands, breast, breast. You know what they, they realized? Matt likes chicken breast. Matt likes chickens. Right. You know, and... For for them, it was smoking, uh, drinking, and chicken, and chicken you know? Yeah. And so every meal, He's they chicken. you know, they couldn't speak very much English, but Matt, Mata, Mata, and then somebody would come out with chicken, you know? I, the, I was the chicken guy. Right. <laughs> and oftentimes, Annie's dad would come and buy two chickens. Yeah. And they would just push the chickens in front of me, and they'd all sit there like this, arms folded, watching me. Because you know, they're like, well, this is this is our chance to make Matt happy. You know, yeah. this is our chance to yeah. give him something. <laughs> yeah. And so it was always chicken breast. We have a big meal. You know, you've yeah. seen some of the parties yeah. in my oh, videos. Oh, big yeah. parties, right? Yeah, they had this round, huge big, round huge round tables. tables. Oh, yeah. And they'll 
the, the whole the thing would, would it spin. Could, it, could, it could spin. So if you had something in front of you like, but you, you can't put them on your plate, it just went along this way. And then when you had room, it came back. <laughs> yeah, you put it back on the plate. You know what? My dad know, or my, my grandpa knows about China because of my videos. Yeah. I mean, that's pretty cool that he yeah. just described. You've never eaten a dinner in China. Never. But you know, you know. That's cool, you know? Yeah, Grandpa and Grammy, they watch the Jayo Nation all the time. And Mike and Andrew sometimes. Yeah. yeah. And they come by every Saturday. Most of the time it's Mike and Andrew. And yeah. Us. And they watch the, the videos of the, of the nation. Pretty cool. Yeah. Very nice. Real cool. A lot of these days are going to be sort of hodgepodge. If you don't know what hodgepodge means. It's just like a mixture of different moments throughout the day. Uh, I can't quite record constantly forever. Uh, Grandpa telling that story was quite interesting. He, we, uh, after I turned off the camera, he was talking about... We were talking about like waste management and how Americans might waste quite a bit. But in China, they tend to use a lot of... A lot of everything and, and just telling stories is is really interesting to be able to have these vlogs and share my life that's so different from what my grandparents in particular have been able to like experience on their own life and my dad's talking like yeah, yeah, yeah remember that table you had when you ate and, and then remember that moment that you did uh, it's just very cool you were talking about how the way that you're speaking about this upcoming thing in your life could be construed as morbid. We were in the store and we were looking at shoes. And um, initially I walked on over to these shoes and I thought, yeah, those look nice. But then I says to myself, I don't need shoes. Yeah, what am I gonna what am I gonna use another pair of shoes for? Exactly because yeah. I have I have shoes, Matt. Yeah. You know? But the thing is I'm walking through the store and it's like matter of I don't fact. feel like I'm gonna die. Yeah. I, I feel like everything is normal. That you know, that I'm gonna go through this summer and winter, summer and winter and summer and winter. I just don't feel the uh, I just don't feel like the end is coming. Yeah. But you don't, you don't feel it, but then the reality the reality is that it is. And then you make a sort of a sort of a humorous comment almost you know like i don't need that yeah you know, yeah dying. i don't need that i'm dying yeah. you were thinking well maybe th that's that's a morbid thought right but you were just kind of saying that to yourself almost in an yeah. off off-handed remark but right. i think you're you're a real example uh -huh. because most people they'll they would let such a diagnosis make Kill them well. miserable yeah yeah. And if you can kind of come at it from a stance of, well, this is happening. Yeah. It's it's a phase of life, albeit the end end of earth phase, you know. Man, I end of earth phase. If I hadn't had the procedure, the stem cells. Yeah, you would have never known. I would have never known until it was until I was actually at death's door, and then it would have been too late to say, damn, let, let's enjoy this summer. Let's let's make this summer. But so now I don't feel like I'm dying. But yet I am, yeah. and I'm able to have it be in perspective. So for those of you that don't know, my dad wanted to get stem cell surgery because of what, your knees or your elbows? For uh, my spine, mainly. It was a lot of, you were feeling pain and you were thinking that this was gonna be a good fix for you. Right. And while he was getting the stem cell treatment, you couldn't take the pain medication I that you had take been Motrin, taking anti-inflammatories and so you were you were kind of the reason that we say that that stem cell thing is kind of a blessing in disguise is because as soon as you got off the motrin you felt pain and the pain was associated with your pancreas cancer exactly. and so had you kept taking motrin you would have advanced that pancreas cancer until probably it was too late to enjoy life. Yes. Because the way pancreas cancer is, is you know it hits you and then it's it's end zone. It, yeah, exactly. You know, for the yeah. most part. Yeah. So in, in taking that uh, opportunity to, to take off that Motrin to ha because of the stem cell surgery, you were able to find out with, uh, with four or five months in advance. Yes. Before, you know, yeah. so basically that stem cell treatment gave us all four or five months of, of time with our dad. Yep. You know, before 
it really starts getting hard on you. Exactly. You, you ever heard of a go no gauge? Go no go gauge? It's a feeler gauge, and they call it a go no go gauge. So mm. you can push it in to a certain point, and when you when you push it in and it stops, that's when you've got the adjustment right. Mm. When you can go until you can go no more, they call it a go no go gauge. That's how I associate this pancreatic cancer. Yeah. Is that once it comes to a point that uh, um, go, 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 keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Okay, this is good. Once you once you come to a point that uh, you can't go no more, uh, no go. That's no go. Yeah. And and from then on, it's straight downhill. Yeah. But we know before the no go before the the, go, the no go is switched, which we wouldn't which have is known. Great. Had we uh, had he not had this stem cell treatment, exactly, I'd be in China. I'd get a call, or I'd be in Taiwan. Get a call. No dad's, go. Dad's in a bad way. No go. Yeah. Dad has a tendency to wipe the floor with me. I did pretty good on this game though. You've done very good. And the, the game's not over yet. It ain't over till it's over. <gasps> Maybe I distracted him with my vlogging. No, no you didn't. <laughs> I don't know. And the game ain't over yet. So tell me what your plan is here. Okay, where where is my what is where, your where, where is my problem? What's shot? your end game? Where's my problem shot? My well, problem shot is a seven past is, the eight. It's a seven, and I can get it past the eight. Now, if I wanna. If I want to make, if I want to get over here for the seven, uh, where, what ball should I make first? I would say you get the one bounce off here, get the five bounce off here, and then bring yourself for the seven. Okay. That's I, what I would say. I what would, would you say, say? I would say I'm going to try and make the one ball. Yeah. With maybe leave the cue ball right here. Yeah. And then I'm going to hit it with a little bit of low right hand English, and I'm going to come back over here. Mm. All right. It's a weight shot. How hard do I hit it? All right. Not bad. Not bad. Not bad. Ah. Oh! You know what I didn't do? I didn't hit it with enough draw. You know what? That is a lesson in life. You can have the best laid plans. Yeah. And if you don't per do them precisely, yeah. it doesn't mean the game's over. It no. just means you gotta re-strategize. Pool is a very good metaphor for life. And it ain't over till it's over. That's a good metaphor as well. Oh. Ah. Actually, it's kind of nice when he wins one and then I win one. First of all, because I actually win one, which is very nice. Yeah. And second of all, because you always need a tiebreaker, right? Yep. Yeah. Tiebreaker. See? I hit that wrong. I went over the ball slightly, I think. Yeah, I think so too. Who won? Who won the last? Who won that last game? Matthew did. He beat me <laughs> two to one. He the champ. I flubbed it. Nobody won that game. I really lost that game though. I ruined it. There will be another day for there will another, be another game. Day. What is this, Matt? Is this your? That's my camera battery.